Hello everyone, I'm Bob Tribe. Welcome to Valley to Vietnam, where we interview um, residents from the Sacramento Valley who spent time in Vietnam. And our guest today is Mike Durant, who served with the First Signal Company in Fubai. So Mike, welcome, and thank you for coming today. Good, good to be here. Um, so you were born in Sacramento, which is, we haven't had someone born in Sacramento in some time, but you were born in Sacramento in 1946. That's correct. Um, and being a good Catholic boy, you attended Catholic schools. Yeah, I, I started out at St. Philomene's, and then uh, I think it was in the fourth grade, I moved over to uh, St. Ignatius. Uh, it was the, uh, I was in the second graduating class from uh, St. Ignatius. I was raised Catholic too, and I used to go to St. Ignatius. Um, and you went to Encina High School. Yeah, uh, after, uh, well, I went uh, half a year to Christian Brothers, and then uh, uh, I didn't like it at all, uh, and then went to uh, Encina. Now, you grew up in Arden Park, and I, I should say, for those who don't know, Arden Park is defined by Arden Way, Eastern Avenue, Fair Oaks Boulevard, and Watt, and it's a huge area. I mean, there's, that's a, probably enough people there to be a small city in, in uh, California. Yeah, Oops. we, um, uh, my dad built a house, and it was an, uh, it's a, an adobe house. Uh, he built it uh, in, took him about a year and a half, and uh, it was uh, near the, um, Watt Avenue, Fair Oaks Boulevard corner of uh, Arden Park. Okay. Uh, four or five blocks from the from the river. Right. At Selby Stables. Yeah. It was our playground. Yeah. Uh, but they uh, built a house in uh, 1950. Okay. Um, and like most of us who lived in the grew up in the North area, I I found it interesting when we were doing the earlier interview that you went to did many of the same things that I did and all my friends did. Uh, you hung out at the American River, which was a great, fantastic resource for us. Oh yeah, it was, uh, it, like I said, it was our playground. We, yeah. uh, and uh, parents didn't, uh, at that time, didn't seem to, uh, you know, they didn't uh, care. They weren't afraid to let us go down sure. to the river. Uh, there was no Watt Avenue bridge. Uh, all they had at that time was, uh, Tykert had their, uh, their little tiny bridge, a work bridge. Uh, there was no uh, rails or anything on it. And uh, these big Euclid's uh, earth movers used to roll across that. Right, I remember that bridge. Yeah, it was yeah. just upstream from the... What was yeah, just, just barely upstream. Yeah. We used to jump off that and right. go down and pull up all these wires. What are these wires? And they were... <laughs> dynamite caps. Oh my gosh. And we used to, you know, get a battery, uh, just a little battery and, and long wires, bury them, blow things up. Mm -hmm. Great fun. <laughs> and uh, you didn't partake in one of those bad things that we once did too, was BB gun fights. Oh yeah, sure. And how about swimming and fishing and raft and inner tubing? Swim, and fishing, you know, and I, uh, 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 the river seemed so clean too, and you know, if we got thirsty, we would drink right out of the river. It didn't seem to harm anyone. Yeah, it was and uh, fish, for, uh, fished a lot, uh, yeah. black bass, and uh, some of the holes that uh, Tykert made along the way made great black bass holes. So we uh, did a lot of fishing down there. And a lot of those side little pools like that, the water was so much warmer. Oh yeah, you know, versus the river. The yeah. river could be so cold when they'd get get a lot of that bottom water coming down. And you'd, you'd also hang out downtown, and you mentioned the old bus line there that you would... Gibson bus line, yeah, oh, we used to gosh, catch I that and uh, that. go, uh, you know, come downtown here, and uh, the country made, uh, oh, yeah, the uh, country they used to have great tuna fish sandwiches, and I'd look forward to those. Tuna fish sandwiches and a milkshake. Oh, those milkshakes were incredible, and you could get a triple-decker ice cream cone. Oh, yeah. We would, we would uh, eat two of those scoops, and then we'd go over the old county building that's still, uh, and save one scoop, and then drop those off the top of the building, but <laughs> I think the statute of limitations is over, so I won't go any further. Um, out in the north area, you would go to the Village Theater, which no longer exists. Village Theater, oh, yeah. They had great times in the Village Theater. Uh, 
um, and across the street in town and country. You oh, know, yeah. some, one of our parents would take us over there and another parent would you know, pick us up and, right. uh, and uh, we uh, uh, just had a great time. We'd, you know, the theater then, uh, Village Theater, you could smoke in theaters. Oh, yeah. And so sure. here we are, you know, young punks in the eighth grade and we were smoking <laughs> in there. And, I mean, it was... Uh, and, and you would buy these cigarettes. Well. Oh, yeah. Right next door at the Regal gas station. Oh, yeah. I remember that Regal station. Yeah, for a quarter. And one guy would go in and distract the attendant, and then the other one would go in and put quarter in, a, in the machine and oh, yeah. uh, uh, get a right. pack of cigarettes. Yeah, we'd start off with Cools because they were pretty... Yeah, wild. Cools. Uh, so... Um, you would also go to Iceland in North Sac. We used oh, yeah. to do that. Yeah, Iceland again. Big ice skating rink. Meet the uh, you know the, some girls from school or uh, from what, uh, Arden School mostly, and uh -huh. uh, would go over there and we'd end up with uh, you know them skate and whatever. Um, I remember that there was one drive-in restaurant on Fulton that was known as the Encina hang out and that was Harvey's Harvey's yeah oh yeah Harvey's uh, great great times at Harvey's we tended to stay away from there because if you went to the, the neighboring high school my school El Camino you know you had your territory and you guys had your territory and we didn't really try to mix too much yeah we used to go out uh, or one time we went out uh, frogging out by slough house uh -huh. and uh, which we did you know during the summer and uh, we got a bunch of frogs, and we took them uh, to Harvey's, and uh, let them <laughs> let them all go. <laughs> I mean, that was cruel to to, to the animal, but uh, yeah. yeah, we were teenagers. There's a lot of hijinks going on, I know. Um, and of course, Tower Records. Oh yeah, the old Tower Records that was next to Sam's Hofbra out by Watt and El Camino. Yeah, the uh, uh, I remember Tower Records uh, going into Sam's one time with my friend Jim Emmerich, and we passed Tower Records, and there was a, a picture of these three guys with these long, long hair. <laughs> so who are they? These were the Beatles. And I said, "Oh man, that's a flash in the pan. That'll never work." <laughs> and we just thought how terrible that was with so that long hair. And you look at their hair, hair back at that time. It now, wasn't it, very long. It wasn't that long. It was just longer <laughs> right. than other people. Yeah. Um, and Sam's Hofbra. I remember we all we would hang out there and. Oh yeah, you know, and, and you you'd never, never you never eat, eat the, the pickles. pickles. Ah, gosh, yeah. I'll tell you, we're we're on the same. <laughs> track here. Town and Country Bowling Alley, which is now a Lexus dealer. On You're right. Yeah, we used to go over there and uh, I was, uh, I got into, uh, really into bowling, uh, you know, Yeah. Uh, and too. over there at uh, Town and Country. Uh, and, you know, I was shocked uh, that, uh, uh, that, it w that it's gone. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't remember him tearing it down. I must have been out of, you know, living somewhere else or something right. when that was torn down, but surprised. As we got older and were able to drink, there were a couple of places on Fulton. I think one of them was actually in the bowling alley. There was the Tropicana and the Trophy Room. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Um, so those were good <laughs> hangouts. Um, and then, of course, um, cruising K Street and going to Mills Drive-In and... Yeah, of course we did that, and also uh, uh, in in high school, uh, uh, Sakai and McClatchy, uh, they had these uh, high school fraternities. Oh right, and yeah, uh, I think, I did I think one. one was uh, thirty six. I'm not sure what the names of the other, but they always had great dances over at Governor's Hall in the old State Fairgrounds, right. and uh, we would uh, always uh, go to those. The other, other fraternity was called Anoya, Anoya. and we called it Annoying, <laughs> and uh, we used to sneak in through the women's bathroom there at Governor's Hall, we'd get some girls to let us in, then we didn't have to pay, I mean, saved us 50 cents or something, right. it wasn't much, but yeah, that was fun. And we'd go, then we'd go to the Pancake Circus, which still exists. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, okay, so after Encina, you went to American River College. Yeah. The, the uh, American River, the 
high school with ashtrays. <laughs> And uh, spent a year and a half there, and and uh, and uh, I actually studied, and uh, right. I ended up at uh, after a year and a half, I transferred up to uh, UNR, University of Nevada in Reno, where uh, I only spent a year, but uh, it was uh, I learned a lot up there. Well, what what did you learn? Well, nothing about. <laughs> Schol nothing scholastic, okay. but I learned to uh, I learned to gamble up there. Oh boy! Yeah, I l actually learned the crap table, and that's what. Uh, yeah. Uh, I still play today. Really? Oh yeah. So did you lose money, win money, or what? Oh yeah, we. Uh, uh, these are quarter crap tables in uh, at the old Herald's Club, where a fraternity brother. Uh, an older, uh, he had already graduated, and he was working as a dealer there, so, and I wasn't 21 yet, so, uh, but he, he didn't care, so we went up right. there, and he, and it was, you know, not crowded, and he'd uh, do crap lessons, craps lessons. Then you dropped out there, and you came back to Sacramento, or what? Came back to Sacramento, I dropped out of there, and, and uh, uh, came, uh, came back, uh, Moved in, uh, moved back in with my folks, and uh, went to uh, Sac State, where I registered. I remember I registered for nine units, and um, I I think I took a uh, I failed six of them because I just didn't show up, <laughs> and uh, was having a lot of fun again, and then um, uh, went to uh, a night out with some friends. My brother, who is three years older than I am, uh, uh, I took his ID, and we went down to one of those places on Fulton Avenue that you were talking about. I, I don't know the name of it now, but uh, all these other guys were older than you know. They were 21. They were legal. I was, uh, uh, I, I was uh, the younger guy in the crowd, and uh, had my brother's ID. Tried to get into one of the clubs. The guy uh, at the door, the bouncer, said, uh, "This is a phony ID." And instructions from our management now is we have to uh, arrest you and do a citizen's arrest. Oh, they boy. called the cops, and off I uh, went to uh, uh, jail. And uh, uh, surprisingly, I I ended up in in jail. Opened the door, and there's a, another guy that I knew in high school. <laughs> he was sitting there from something else. I don't yeah. even know. I see him today, he's a big shot, or he was a big shot until he retired over at the state capitol. Did, did you have to go in front of a judge? Oh yeah, that's, uh, went in front of the judge, and with my, uh, my dad was there, and um, the judge uh, took my license away, uh, revoked it. Oh. He didn't just, uh, you know, do a temporary thing, he revoked the license, and then he, uh, um, uh, I think I was on probation or something, and his final, he said, I suggest, young man, that uh, you uh, join the service. Uh -huh. And uh, so uh, I didn't want to join the service, but uh, my old man encouraged me. <laughs> and so we, uh, uh, I volunteered for the draft. Okay. And uh, sure enough, I was drafted. I'll be darned. You know, that's interesting. That very same thing happened to my younger brother. He did go to court, and the judge encouraged him to join the uh, military, and he, he ended up joining the Air Force. But um, one of the things I just wanted to say is driver's licenses were so unsophisticated then. We'd get TV Guide, and they had all kinds of different numbers oh, yeah. depending on the, and we'd cut these little numbers out, and we'd, we could change our, our driver's license using these little numbers. And I mean, it wasn't very sophisticated, but half the time it'd work, you know, yeah. it was amazing. Now, driver's license today are so, so different. So you went into the military and you, you yeah, went I, in October of 67? October of 66. Six. Yeah. I went, uh, Went down to, um, uh, I thought I was coming back. I, I went down for a physical. Right. And uh, I said, well, everybody does the physical, and then yeah. they come back. Yeah, in you Oakland. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> really? I got the physical and then uh, went to the induction center, and um, uh, they 
put us all in a in maybe uh, 50 guys in, in a room. And I remember my dad saying, for anything, do not volunteer for anything. You know, right. just uh, you, you, you sit in the back and you don't make waves. So um, I walk into this room and there was a chair right in the front row. So I sit down and then I remembered my dad saying, uh, don't volunteer and be, uh, you know, be invisible. Yeah. So I got up out of that chair and moved to the back. Smart. In walks a uh, uh, Marine gunny and he says, uh, okay, first two rows here, you're being drafted into the Marines. And I said, God, thank God. Uh, yeah, the Marine casualties were significantly higher than any Army infantry oh, yeah. outfit, I think, yeah. Um, so you went to basic where? Uh, basic up to uh, Fort Lewis, Washington. Uh -huh. Uh, came back to, after basic, came back to Sacramento for a, I think, month or three weeks, or whatever it is. And then I was off to uh, Fort Monmouth, New Jersey. And uh, for, uh, my MOS was uh, uh, fixed station transmitter control, and all I had to hear in basic training was fixed. You know, that's, uh, that sounded good to me. And yeah. so fixed station transmitter control, I think it was 20 weeks, and then and then after that we got 10 more weeks of fixed station technical control. So it was like 30 weeks, or uh, it was in. Uh, I got out of there in uh, September, came back for a month, and then uh, or no, August came back for a month, and September uh, f uh, w went down and flew to uh, Vietnam. And I think you told me, you know, as you finished basic. Um, your NCO started passing out MOSs, Military Occupational Specialty, to each oh, of yeah. the trainees, and almost everybody was getting 11B, which is an infantryman, or 11C, or small arms, yeah, yeah. a mortar guy, or yeah. whatever, and you get this weird one. Yeah, and uh, asked him, of course, me, and uh, this is incredible, but the, 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 it's just a. Uh, me and another guy that I went to St. Philomene's with, uh, Mike, uh, can I? Sure. Uh, Mike Hayes. We, uh, uh, we, we said, guy, you look familiar. Yeah, you look familiar. And we talked and we discovered we went to St. Philomene's. We were in St. Philomene's. Uh, and uh, he was in the same basic training thing. He got, uh, he was on the rounds. I was the last one uh, uh, to get my MOS. and. He got his MOS and it was um, uh, 32D, 32C20, I think. And you know, everybody's wondering, what the heck is that? Uh, you know, and everybody's getting the small arms infantry, small arms infantry, right. and and it comes to me and I said, oh God, please not small arms <laughs> infantry. <laughs> and I got uh, I got the same one as my case, okay. and we were the only two. Wow. So you keep having this good luck. Yes. Very, yeah. <laughs> Very good luck. Yeah. You get to Vietnam in October of 67. Yeah. And you're sent up to this microwave site at Fubai. Right. Uh, Fubai, uh, it was a microwave, uh, it was a long lines. Uh, uh, we were a, lo a long lines battalion. What does long lines mean? That means we uh, interfaced uh, uh, local communications with uh, long line communication. Say someone up at Quezon wants to talk to somebody in Saigon, right. that circuit goes through our, uh, uh, would go through our station. Or out to a ship? Would that or out to a ship or back to the States, Washington or oh, okay. wherever. Yeah, it would okay. connect with you know, a bigger uh, system. And, and were there several of these uh, throughout Vietnam? Oh yeah, yeah, there were yeah. Uh, probably two dozen. Okay. Uh, you know, yeah, sure. it was also ca caused, uh, uh, called an IWCS site, Integrated Wideband Communication System. So, okay. so you've, you've had all this time with this communications training, so now you're... Yeah, we, we were there, which we, you know, um, on-the-job training is the yeah. best, and that's where I learned most of this stuff. I've, <laughs> it seems I've, I'd forgotten everything yeah. uh, you know, learned in school. So was your was your job then mostly voice or was it, you know, voice and uh, data, uh, but mostly voice. Uh, yeah. The uh, 
the thing about this site is that uh, we were on a uh, um, uh, an RRFS site, Radio Research Field Station. These guys were all uh, uh, Army Security Agency okay. uh, spooks. Yeah. And their job was to, uh, one of their tasks was to drop uh, out of a C-130, they'd fly over uh, Cambodia and Laos and drop these little mics along the trails and uh, and then listen to, back at Fubai, they would listen to what's going on on the trail and and uh, yeah and learn what's going on. Right. So it was, uh, uh, our our little site was um, there was probably a dozen guys uh, working on that site, but it was. Because of the uh, microwave gear, it had to be air conditioned. So we were always in an air conditioned, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah. very comfortable. Just like computers, they have to have this air conditioning. Yeah, so. yeah. And uh, <clears throat> for a while, when I first got there, uh, the guys were putting up uh, bunks in the uh, in the station. And then somebody said, "No, you can't do that. You gotta." And so we had yeah. to. And it was an old French, uh, when the French were there, they built this uh, site. So uh, that's where we lived. And the thing is, is uh, it had uh, three or four levels of uh, screening because all of this stuff was, uh, uh, all these guys were all crypt uh, cryptographers and, and very, <coughs> the security was really high. Yeah. And it was right next to a Third Marine Division, which these guys were, you know, going out and, and doing the work. Uh, yeah. These, uh, but on this site, right near the fence was a swimming pool, and so we, you know, we'd be you know, basketball court, swimming pool, and we'd be swimming there, and you know. Uh, um, uh, a unit of Marines would go by, and they're you know they're uh, you know look over, pointing, and like, what the hell is going on here? And because they didn't have, you know, as high a security, they couldn't come in and use uh, your compound or anything. No. Yeah, we, we we would get you know rocketed, and unfortunately, our, our antennas had to be high, and they were very good, you know, uh, I guess sighting uh, yeah, sure. devices for the enemy. So we'd get you know every. Every week we get rocketed and mortared a couple of times. So you spend 11 months there? 11 months. I got an early out for Sac State. Okay. I, I got back into Sac State. And, you got and during the meantime, I got my driver's license uh, re oh, re uh, redone. Great. So, so you came home uh, September 68. Yeah. You start at Sac State, and you also uh, Joined a group called Veterans Against the War. Oh yeah, we. Uh, I was uh, uh, a whole family was against the war. My brother uh, uh, Bill, he was uh, uh, about ready to uh, to go to uh, Canada. He was working down at UC uh, in Davis and uh, living in Latrobe. Mm -hmm. And he got a. Uh, a call one day that uh, from his wife that the FBI was up there at the ranch and uh, uh, don't come home. Anyway, he was arrested uh, finally and, they, and during the trial he was uh, uh, acquitted because of some technicality and uh, he didn't, he didn't yeah. go. So the point is, is uh, the family was really against this war and, and I was kind of out there. But um, my uh, Mother said, "If I ever was, uh, uh, if I, if I was a casualty, and uh, she had seen these ceremonies over at the Signal Corps, you know, at the Signal Depot, that that's where they would give, you know, people who were, uh, um, people who were killed in Vietnam, and, and the decorations would be awarded. Yeah. Uh, that's where they would. And if that ever happens, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, but I'm gonna refuse uh, the medals." So, yeah, and so I uh, joined the uh, joined several marches here in the, in Sacramento and and down in in San Francisco. Uh, went down there. Meanwhile, you finished your BA at Sac State in yeah. in what? In uh, I think it's uh, government. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it's split government journalism or gov government, but I took a lot of journalism classes. Okay. And, and 
And then did you decide to get your master's right away or what? Uh, of course, I used my GI Bill coming back to Sac State. Yeah, I think I got four years, right? Uh -huh. So uh, that was two years of it. So I had two, year, two more years of GI Bill, and I was going to get every, everything <laughs> I had coming to me. Right. Uh, so I um, uh, f uh, went to, uh, I, I got, in the meantime, I, I got married. That uh, uh, fall, we left for uh, Taiwan. I was, uh, I was accepted into the uh, SAC, uh, um, California, uh, California State College's international program. And so went, uh, went over to uh, Taiwan and we studied uh, Chinese and, and had a very good time How again long were you there? in Taiwan uh, for a year. Okay. Yeah. And then we, uh, uh, on the way back, we went through, uh, we took a rice boat. Uh, we didn't have much money. Uh, but in, in, in Taiwan, we were, because of the GI Bill, we, we were very, you know, very well off. Yeah. Uh, so and we had, a, we had an apartment. We had, for a while, we had an ama, a, a maid, that would, you know, come in, <laughs> two of us and a cat, you know, yeah. clean up after us. And right. in fact, she lived there for a while. We couldn't do that. And yeah. she was cooking for us and everything. Wow. But anyway, we took a, uh, a, uh, a, a, a rice boat back to uh, uh, Japan because that's where our airplane was going to take off from back to the States. And then we hitchhiked uh, from uh, Kagoshima uh, to uh, Tokyo. So okay. that, was, uh, that was a fun time. And yeah. that's, uh, incidentally, that's where I had my R&R. &R. I took my R&R &R oh, okay. in, uh, in uh, Tokyo. And you liked it? Oh yeah, I liked Japan and, and you know, and... Later you're going to work there. Yeah. So you go back to LA and you get your master's at that point or? Yeah, it was a, a professional master's degree they call a professional program uh, modeled after Columbia University. And uh, yeah, I got my uh, uh, master's. It was a one year program. Uh -huh. So that fit in well. Because you had actually already done a year, you know, in your yeah. other program, yeah. So it, uh, and that, uh, it spent my, uh, all my four years of uh, GI Bill. Yeah. And so I had to go, uh, after I got the master, I had to go back to work. And so I started working at, uh, at uh, papers. Uh, and you worked at a bunch of different newspapers. Yeah, I, several. I started out at the uh, Oxnard Press Career. And then I went up to San Luis Obispo. And then I got out of uh, newspapers uh, for a while and uh, worked for the Dairy Council of California as a flack. Yeah. And, uh, but I didn't like that at all. And then uh, worked in, um, in uh, Auburn at the Auburn Journal. It was great fun up there. Uh, yeah. Just a great. It's a nice town. Yeah. And a good news town, too. And then. Uh, down to uh, uh, Hayward, worked at the, at the Daily Review in Hayward, and then back to Roseville. I worked there for about 10 years. And then from Roseville, uh, I uh, was lucky enough to get chosen for a job in uh, Tokyo, working for Stars and Stripes. Oh, okay. So I was back in the military, and uh, or not in the military, but working with uh, sure. the military. There was. Uh, I used to read that newspaper. Yeah, and it was um, you know they call it a uh, um, first uh, a government-owned First Amendment newspaper, mm -hmm. which is you know what? How can that be? <laughs> but we uh, we had the horsepower to uh, if a general wanted no, you can't run this story. Blah blah blah. Right. We'd, uh, they'd say, well, I want to talk to, you know, the general, I want to talk to your boss. And you know, so he said, okay, here's his number. And it's the Secretary of Defense uh, uh, in Washington, that's his number. Uh, right. Because they, the Secretary of Defense would, would just say, no, -uh, they're a First Amendment newspaper. You can't, you can't do anything with them. And eventually you came back here to Sacramento. Yeah, let's see. Yes, came back to Sacramento. And, uh, uh, worked in uh, in Tokyo until two. Uh, uh, let's see, 1987, and had to have a job, so I 
was an old friend from uh, Auburn Journal, worked at the Stockton Record, so I, uh, through his help, I got, uh, got on with Stockton Record, worked there for, uh, for three years, and then uh, got a job at the, w with the state oh. in the Department of Water Resources <coughs> as a science writer. Oh. And that's where I retired from in uh, about five years ago. Okay. And are you fully retired now, or do you oh, still? Yeah. yeah, okay. Fully retired. Okay. I don't know, uh, you know, I don't like weekends anymore. <laughs> well, Mike, um, thanks for your service. Oh, yeah. It's a pleasure having you here today, and that's all for us today on Valley to Vietnam. Check in with us next time. <laughs>